Okay, so in our last video, we looked at the derivative of power functions, and a power function looks like this, in case you didn't know, f of x is equal to some coefficient x times n, and uh, usually n would now be uh, an integer, and n is greater or equal to zero. Okay, so in other words, it's a counting number, I think, that's what it is, okay? Counting numbers. Now, a quotient function looks like this. Okay, a quotient function it looks like this, where we have that k over x to the power of n. <coughs> okay, now you'll notice that this is the same as saying k times x to the power of negative n. In other words, it, once we know this one, we can eliminate that, well not the n power of z, we can eliminate that part. Then we can assume that n is either positive or negative values. It doesn't have to just be positive. But we first need to see just what is the rule. And the rule for this one was that we take the derivative, to, ta to get the derivative, we take the exponent, multiply it with the coefficient, okay, n times k. That's what it looks like is happening okay and then we subtract one from the exponent so n minus one this is the derivative we want to know is would it be the same now even if n was negative okay and that's what we're going to look at before we continue let me just remind you one more thing that I showed in the previous video that x plus h to the power of n was equal to x to the power of n plus n times x to the power of n minus 1 times h to the power of 1 plus and then there's a bunch of terms in between the next term would have some coefficient okay times x to the power of n minus 2 times h to the power of 2 so we notice that the x exponents gets less and the h exponents gets more all the way up to the very last term would be h to the power of n okay that's the last term okay we're going to use that because what we are trying to do is finding the derivative of that function okay so forget about this one for now we're trying to find the derivative of that function the derivative of that function would be finding the limit when h tends to 0 of fx plus h minus f of x over h. That's the general way or the f um, first principle way of finding the derivative. Okay, so now if we substitute, we have the limit of h tending to 0 of fx plus h means that in this function I am now going to replace x with x plus h. So this becomes k over x plus h to the power of n minus and f of x is just k over x to the power of n and everything gets divided with h but instead of dividing with h I'm going to tip in times so I'm going to multiply with 1 over h okay just to simplify this so that we don't have too many fractions now in order to continue to be able to cancel this h with anything in here I'm first going to have to make this one term to do that I must add the two uh, fractions and to add those two fractions we see we are going to need to have common denominators okay so our common denominator is obviously going to be both of those factors have to be included x to the power of n and x plus h to the power of n this this fraction here requires an x to the power of n so we multiply numerator and denominator with x to the power of n. This one needs an x plus h to the power of n, so we're doing that x plus h to the power of n minus k times x plus h to the power of n. Good, and that gets multiplied with 1 over h. Now you can see I would love to cancel the h in the denominator here with h in the numerator there, but we still have terms in the numerator we need to factorize that in order to factorize that we are going to have to simplify it first okay and here you can see why I reminded us 
of what x plus h to the power of n is going to be. So this becomes the limit when h tends to 0 of, again I need a long line here, k to the times x to the power of n minus k times, and this now becomes x to the power of n plus n times x to the power of n minus 1 times h to the power of 1 plus and then some constant from here on onwards it doesn't matter what the constant is x times n minus 2 times h2 plus and this goes all the way up to h to the power of n okay that is this bracket in the numerator okay the whole thing gets divided with x to the power of n x plus h to the power of n and the whole business gets multiplied with 1 over h okay now we can simply multiply out these brackets and then we have the limit as h tends to 0 and now you'll notice when we do multiply out this bracket the k um, gets multiplied to every term inside here that was the original uh, numerator that k is the original numerator it's still part of the whole problem so it gets multiplied in now notice what happens is that we get k to the power of n minus k to the power of n so that this term and that term will uh, add up to zero then we get negative k times n that's important and negative k times n x to the power of n minus 1 h negative k times c x to the power of n minus 1 times h squared plus in this case just multiplies all the terms I suppose uh, all the terms will be negative because it's multiplied with a negative k all the way up to negative k times h to the power of n that is what I have left in my numerator my denominator I am not simplifying by the way it's already in two perfect factors so why would I uh, simplify that okay so times 1 over h and now we can see our next step is obviously going to be to try and take out an h as a common factor which is not a problem because every term will have an h all these terms in here will have um, factors of h between h to the power of 3 and h to the power of n minus 1 that's all of them will at least have an h so we have now the limit as h tends to 0 of taking h out as a common factor we get h negative k n x to the power of n minus 1 the h has been taken out so it's h to the power of 0 which I don't need to write minus k c x n minus 1 h minus all of these h's have one less h minus k h to the power of n minus 1 k divided by still have my denominator exactly as it's been in 1 over h and this is the place where we wanted to get to the point where we can finally cancel our h and uh, the reason why we wanted to do that is because we want to substitute h with 0 but we can't because h is in the denominator here but now there's no more h in the denominator okay yes there is an h here as a denominator but when we substitute 0 here we get x plus h now as long as x is not also 0 h is allowed to be 0 okay but even here yeah, from the very beginning we would have had that x is not equal to 0 because uh, of the original function so we know x is not 0 and this is the point where I'm allowed to substitute so now I don't have any h's anymore I only have these terms now all of the h's may be substituted with 0 okay there's a bunch of h's here that will be 0 the point being that every single term that contains an h in the numerator will vanish because it it's multiplying zero so all of these terms will equal zero so I'm left with and remember I've substituted h equal to zero now so I don't need to write my limit anymore I got negative k in x to the power n minus 1 divided by in the denominator I also substitute so I get 
if this is 0, I just have x plus 0, so it's just x to the power of n. So it's x to the power of n times x to the power of n is equal to x to the power of 2n. Okay, let's simplify a little bit more. We see single term in the numerator, single term in the denominator. So what we can do is say the following, x to the power of n minus 1 minus 2n. I'm subtracting the um, exponents in the num denominator from the exponent in the numerator and this can continue a little bit further negative k n x mm, uh, then we get negative n negative 1 n minus 2 n gives me negative n minus 1 this is the derivative okay this is the derivative now usually they'll ask you do not uh, write your answer with positive exponents so that just means that this is actually I can put brackets over here okay like that so look what happens if I multiply back my negative it's negative n negative 1 okay so the exponent is actually negative n plus 1 so if I write this as positive exponents I get negative k n divided by x to the power of n plus 1 one okay that's the derivative now this does not look at all like we had before we had before that if fx is equal to x let's say kx to the power of n then the derivative used to be n times k x to the power of n minus one and this one looks completely different look this time I'm multiplying with a negative okay as well there was no negative there and I've got n plus 1 instead of n minus 1 okay now remember what our rule was here okay we said we multiply multiply the exponent multiply the exponent with the coefficient okay that was the first thing and subtract one from the exponent subtract one from exponent okay that is if we have this format coefficient base exponent so look at this if I have fx is equal to k over x to the power of n and I want to write it as coefficient base and exponent I can write it like this I can say it's k x to the power of negative n so let's let's multiply the exponent with the coefficient Our exponent now is negative n so the derivative if we follow these steps we get negative n times k and subtract 1 from the exponent times x minus n minus 1 that's exactly what we had here minus k n x to the power of n minus 1 okay now we just put that in brackets and made that a positive okay but point being that if I were to write this in terms of uh, or in terms of a base with a positive exponent it would be negative n times k over x to the power positive n positive 1 that's it isn't that exactly the same okay and this is again just the derivative of a um, quotient it's what we've been doing but the rule stays the same okay multiply the exponent with the coefficient and subtract one from the exponent it's as simple as that in the end you might just have to write your uh, well in the beginning you first have to write it in uh, we call this a power function so you first have to write it as a power function okay and then you apply this rule and then in the end you might just want to revert it back to a quotient function but that's it I don't think it's that difficult although it might be a little bit technical in this video all you need to remember is this Okay, if you can multiply the exponent with the coefficient, subtract one from the exponent, you should be fine finding the derivative of 
power functions and uh, quotients. Next up, the derivative of root functions. It's going to be the same? Well, I'll leave it for you to decide. See you there.